Brags, I don't like to boast. They like hot butter on the breakfast toast. Watching flicks, talking chicks, I like to mow boat. Can River Man make it your check? Nope. So look at all these movies I got. Commenting like, mmm, should we watch them or not? I know they just be acting for cash. But I still got one question to ask. Like, why do you do that? Do that? Do that? If that was me, I'd be like, screw that, screw that, screw that. I'm an alpha, I'd eat through that. Do that, do that. Mmm, so why'd he do that? Do that, do that. Mm. Hey, what's up, gang? Revival House Network, BTM Boys here. It's Zach and myself. And uh, this week we have a uh, TV episode. <laughs> We're dipping back into the old well of Are You Afraid of the Dark? And uh, it's it's really weird selecting which one to do because I had a I was having fucking Mandela effect about which ones we've done, and I, I can't keep straight. Uh, if we've just talked about doing them or if we've done them already, we've done so many commentaries, but apparently we haven't done uh, the tale of the pinball wizard, which it, that it surprised me because this has always been maybe my favorite episode. So I'm kind of shocked we haven't done it. I don't even remember this shit. Oh, this one's good, man. I really like it. This is where fucking Roger Daltrey is the kid in this movie. No, it's obviously a nod to it, but no, it's a kid that works for, I think it's like an arcade repair shop or something like that, or a pinball machine repair shop in the mall. I don't think he works in a legit arcade. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, the owner basically warns him not to fuck around with his shit while he's away, like on lunch break or something. And he plays this game and he gets sucked into it. And then basically he doesn't realize he was sucked into a game. And all of a sudden the mall turns into this giant pinball machine. Genius. You don't remember this? Vaguely now. I see. The only reason I'm having deja vu with it is I could have swore... I brought up on a show, uh, there's an effect where I think it's supposed to be like, like he sits in a chair and it's supposed to be zooming and moving him like by itself, but you can clearly see the guy pushing it, the hand, the set hand. Dang. Um, so I, I, I'm having deja vu with this, but I guess we didn't do it. If not, we're doing it again, but no, no, we haven't done it before. Anyway, uh, I don't know how you guys are going to follow along. This shit might be on YouTube. We actually own the volume sets that are on Voodoo, and I know every year they run them on pretty good sale around the you know the Halloween season, but uh, if you guys happen to have that, it's in volume three, so We got whatever. past the fucking Nickelodeon intro that's always really fucking loud compared to the rest of it. Yeah, so as soon as that fades to black right before um, it kicks in with that creepy boat on the fucking lake, that's where we're at. So we're going to go and get started in three. Two, one, play. Oh, hell yeah. Fuck, there it is. The fucking uh, the image burned into my fucking dreams growing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the clown, dude, uh, or the homeless clown. We always talk about this, but I think every time we record an episode for this, but it, this was pretty generally creepy. <laughs> it's amazing. For a kid show. I get it. It's not like a kid show. It's like a preteen show, but. Are they still doing that reboot? Didn't you say they were doing a movie or something? They already did it. I, I don't remember. It was like a short mini series. I don't know if it got picked up for season two or not. But like you could get the mini series for like six bucks. On Voodoo. You know, so what are the odds that. Uh, wait, so whose story is it? It's probably the kid that's playing the Game Boy. Did he just say, what button does this do, and then hit it, and then it reset the game? Everybody knows that the fucking reset was on the side, like the fucking power. Fucking beta kit. Yeah, who, I, I can't remember who tells the story in this, but it was always thematic. It just it just so happens that whatever the tonight's uh, story was about, there was somebody in the gang that was doing something relevant. So this kid came in here, and he's got a Game Boy, and he's like all addicted to it. Exactly. Which, by the way, he's playing a Game Boy, man. He thinks he can play this thing and see that fucking screen in front of a campfire. Impossible. It, it didn't have a. It didn't have a lit a backlight. Which was such was a, a stupid oversight on their part. Like, how do, how do you do that? How do you put like generations of like these portable consoles without like the very fucking minimum thing you should need for one? Well, it, amazing. And but yet they still outsold the competition with Game Gear. Game Gear had the backlight. That thing drained like six or eight batteries in no time. And the thing is, is even that wasn't perfect because the the backlight you had to have it at just the perfect angle. Otherwise, you just saw a big flash of white. You know what I mean? Did you ever play Game Gear? 
I don't know. But hey, while we're looking at this, the cast, how many of these fucking underage kids would you f Ooh. No, see, I don't make those jokes anymore. See, that, that was just a one-off. I, I could do it uh, every once in a while. And that demonetized the video. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude, come on. <laughs> don't, don't. Maybe use bleeps accordingly. But anyway, Gary's the one that's telling the story, and he literally had nothing to do with that uh, whole intro with them passing around the Game Boy and stuff. Like, how do you know they were going to be obsessed with that stuff? The fucking uh, the volume on this player is finicky AF. I'm having trouble, like, keeping it audible while hearing you, too. Uh, I got it perfectly just now. Well, don't you just adjust the volume on the, the player separate from... That's what I just said. I just said it's finicky as fuck. Listen to me, Aaron. So you, it's because you can't hear me because it's so fucking loud. Okay, so we got this kid. He looks like Nick Jonas. He's our he's our subject here. He's got a stupid ass haircut. Of course, you like this episode. I never understood how that water gun was floating. You think that water gun's gonna show up later? It is. Uh, is it not setting on something? It doesn't look like it. Always looks like it's floating in the air. All uh, these things that we're gonna we're seeing here that they're they're oh putting. We're it's gonna like, see that guy again too. We're watching the Night in Terror Tower Goosebumps episode. Yeah, that guy with the 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 Lynch dude, the hood. Yeah, so he'll show up again later as well. Yeah, see, I vaguely remember this one. So yeah, this guy has like a repair shop. You know, it, it, I know malls are a bit of a wasteland anyway, but even when they were thriving in the late '90s and still in, even in the early 2000s, shops like this didn't survive. How does this guy stay in business? Yeah, like, uh, remember that time we went to that convention and we had to meet in a mall, and I literally was hanging out at the mall for like three hours straight? Yeah. That was fucked. So was it like a ghost town mall? There was nothing going on? Yeah, like, I went and took a shit like three or four times, and it, it wasn't really because I had a shit, I just wanted to go fucking sit somewhere. I think Riverman and I walked in there, and I think I recall it looking pretty barren. Hell yeah. Where Was that in Kansas City, or were we outside of Kansas City? I can't remember. It was like a little bit outside, I think. It wasn't the the convention wasn't even in Kansas City at the time. It was oh, like outside of it. Yeah, that's right. It was in like St. Joseph or something. I don't know. Okay, so well, was it totally dead, or did you? Was there any stores you were able to kill time at? I don't think any of the stores were open. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was like a fucking uh, what's it called where you can buy the fake dicks and stuff. Oh, Spencer's. Stuff. Yeah, I was hanging out there for a little bit. Yeah, would you fuck this guy? Uh, no, not at all. Oh yeah, does he got he's got those dank ass fucking things around your neck that hold your glasses? Why would you ever need those? I don't know, man. People that only put on their glasses when they need to read something, and they have to read throughout the day. You can trust me. Just wear them all the time. Come on, I solved it. Your ears are less expensive than that fucking doohickey you got there. This uh, episode I always really dug because, I, I don't know, I, I never really found what happens to him really scary or anything, and I, I kind of envied him. Uh, spoiler alert, he's kind of stuck in, well, okay, spoiler alert, he, he never gets out. It, the ending kind of, it always ends with that Goosebumps ending, you know, like it's it's an unhappy ending, right? There's some kind of like twist at the end that, and he doesn't actually get to escape. Um, and he's stuck in the pinball machine. Dang. And I always thought it was kind of cool. I'm like, man, that's not too bad. He just gets to play the same game over and over and over again and save the babe. Oh, yeah. You get to fuck her before, like, she disappears, too? I don't know. Has to do that. So you don't remember anything? I know you said you remember vaguely, but is it starting to come back to you? A little bit, yeah. See, whenever you showed up and you're like, which one? Does any of them come to your mind? The first one that came to my mind was that episode with the midget painted chrome. What? Where he's like a virus. In like a virtual reality thing. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. That might have been anything past like season three is is gonna be rough for me. I can't remember. It's it's the well, first two you, seasons. You can remember the Earl the older stuff easier. The newer stuff is like newer, but like the older stuff is fresher in mind. But I watched this a lot less as it as it went forward. Beta kick. Yeah. All right. So I don't want. Anyway, he told him, he told him, don't touch anything, but he just kind of gave this look outside, right, of his office, like, smirking, like, I knew he would. Exactly. It begs the question, was he, is he really a malicious guy? At the end, you'll see him kind of laughing, right, and, like, he's evil. And this is the chick who's going to be the princess in the game, by the way. She's, you know. 
I remember. The object of his eye, yeah. So now we all know which one of these underage <laughs> Let's move on to another topic. See, that's not funny. I can't make those jokes anymore. <laughs> Dude. That's well, not cool. Maybe, maybe you're lucky and she's actually 18. Maybe she's not underage. Hopefully. Does it really matter, though, when it, when worse comes to worse, when we watched this show as a kid, we were younger than her, so it was, uh, like, maybe would have made, been illegal for her, but it was okay for us to think that. <laughs> I don't even know. So if we just go back to our original selves, you know? I mean, it doesn't really make sense, but that's the logic Mac always uses when we, when we do this on our show. I get what you're saying, and I guess I've kind of thought about that kind of thing before, and it's just weird... Paradox thing. It's almost like time travel. Well, this makes sense, and this makes sense, and this makes sense. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to like hurt my brain thinking about that stuff. It's like uh, the last time I watched uh, fucking uh, Adventures in Babysitting. I grew up my whole life thinking, holy shit, Elizabeth Shue was so fucking hot in this movie. And then the last time I watched it, I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's that movie. Fucking Elizabeth Shue was so hot in this movie. And then I find out while reading trivia, she was 16 or 17 when they filmed that movie. I was like, fuck. I can't say that no more. Wait, how old was Elizabeth? Can't say Elizabeth she was an adult. No, she was like seventeen, something like that. That's how old she was when she was in the show. Or maybe, maybe it wasn't that movie. Maybe it was uh, Idle Hands. I found out Jessica Alba was seventeen while they were making Idle Hands. But then, whenever they came back to reshoot the ending, she was eighteen. So you could say she's hot uh, just on the ending. Okay, yeah. I mean, like I said, I think at the end of the day. It just becomes a thing where you just don't say certain things aloud. You just you just have more class than that, right? You don't. Oh, I have none. You don't go there. I have none. I'm the king of a literature. Yeah, see, he's back to playing that fucking game. See that guy? He was just like fucking pickety bam. Like I, I'm gonna set him up to fail, and like I know he's doing it, and I don't even give a fuck. See, he probably it's like he's, he's like the fucking. Uh, He's a scientist with like in the mouse trap, like the little the mice running around finding the cheese, and then he's got a fucking uh, mouse trap right where the fucking cheese is. Mm. Asshole. I always wanted to be in a in a mall overnight. I thought it'd be cool. It, it comes from really liking Dawn of the Dead and shit. You know, I always thought that seemed like so cool to be locked up in the mall and to have just access to all these things. And you know, they were going to the bank they're going to the, the, the jewelry store and stuff and of course me being a kid it's like i just want to go into the game store i want to go yeah. into that uh eb games or babbages and i want to plug in the consoles into the t because they're, they're gonna have electronics in there and i just want to play all those games i couldn't you afford know, though that they're they probably fucking you know close all the individual stores too yeah, I didn't really think like that. I didn't think logically, but exactly. they do. They, they they lock them all up individually. But still, um, yeah, assuming they didn't lock everything up individually, it would have been a lot of really fun. They just kept those TVs playing games while they're not there. Like, fucking fuck the fucking bill. We don't care about expenses. Right. It's raining coins. Yeah, so he's got a game addiction. He's got to get those coins to play the game. And uh, who, who do we have here? Fucking Jeff Steen. Yeah, it's a adults. No, it's a zombie. I think they're supposed to be zombies. That's what they're called. Like those are yeah. See, they're chrome. They're chrome. He's got dank to dust. I'm kind of conflicted here because I I don't necessarily want to do more question stuff more than we have commentary because it's a short episode. But I do have to let you know, Zach, we are really behind since we haven't. We got ahead of the game with our recording, so we haven't really recorded much in the past few weeks. So we do have a shit ton of comments. So how do you want to handle that? Do you want to read some of them, or you just want to read all of them? I don't know. Because we have a lot. I mean, and I, I'd like to read all that stuff, but we're starting to get a little backed up. So maybe I'll read some at least. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll sprinkle them throughout this commentary. Oh, yeah. Fucking princess, she dropped the key. That's a trope. That's sexism. Fucking Anita Sarkeesian's pissed. Yeah. So, and this is going to be super original, but um, yeah, their their weakness is water. They they started running away like pussies when he splashed the water at him. He's going to learn that's the weakness. He's going to sit there and kamikaze. He's going to break open that glass thing holding the, the water gun, and he's going to start going to town. They're like the fucking aliens from Signs. Lame. Aliens from Signs are the, probably the dumbest fucking aliens ever. Like, they're supposed to be smart but they, they're allergic to water and came to a fucking, you know, rock in the middle of the universe that's like 80% water. Fucking idiots. 
So that's why, uh, that's another thing that M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong ripped off of the show. Exactly. Water weakness. Did that fucking locker just vomit on him? Yeah, it vomited on him. There's another episode. I don't believe it's in this collection, but it might be. I just I just recall looking for it and, couldn't, and not being able to find it. But do you remember that episode with the babysitter? Um... It yeah. has like yeah the chubby kid and the babysitter with the short blonde do, um, yeah. yeah. I, think I watched that recently on this, and it's like they were. It, it was kind of a similar concept to this. He kind of got stuck in a game, right? Not not a video game, but it was a game of sorts. And there's like a witch, there's a king, and there's all this stuff. I want to say he was reading a book. A book. You're right. You're right. My bad. But it's the same concept. He gets sucked into like a book. This is a game. I love that episode, and I wish I could watch it. I think it's in there. That's right, because she was. He was reading. He's like, no, use your imagination. He wasn't taking it seriously. And he's like, and he, he pulled out his Uzi. Yeah, his Uzi. And he's like, my Uzi weighs a ton. And he started fucking shooting the babysitter full of lead. Yeah. And then he fucking shot his cummies all over the body. Yeah, I got to see if that's on here. I don't think that's... I feel like that was a later episode. And when I say later, I mean season three onward. Because uh, my memory... It's different, like, the older you get, because I have all these fond memories of shows. Ah! Yeah, look at that witch. I wouldn't hit that. <laughs> no, but I, don't you don't you remember things differently as you get older? Like, for example, I, for some reason, remember watching Snick for way longer than I really did, and I remember there being so many classic episodes of Rugrats or and uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark, but when I go back and watch that stuff just to sort of satisfy nostalgia i realized wow there's really all those classic episodes i remembered of rugrats were in the first two seasons that's it mm. and then it just starts going downhill like what and then all the the real classic episodes that i really remember of this show were mainly in the first two seasons did you know what i'm talking about do you remember things differently it seems like time was slowed down back then yeah i, I remember like snake was like an event like the fucking the, the big orange couch like fucking getting together going to fucking a saturday night watching snake i was dank it's yeah good times. And, and i have a lot of nostalgic memories for stuff like salute your shorts and that really only ran for two series two seasons but mm -hmm. yeah it just feels like time was super slowed down back then and I remember everything lasting a lot longer and there being just a lot, but it really didn't. Nowadays, because too, like now we can watch the whole season in fucking one night before we had to wait a whole week for the yeah, second episode. That's a good point, too. But think about it, though. Two years now, being in our 30s, it goes by so fucking fast. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, it's just like a blink it's like, of an didn't eye. Didn't I just fucking buy that stupid sticker for my fucking, my fucking car Is it license plate? Oh, yeah. I got to renew my tags, actually. It's a good, uh, I got to do that by the end of the month, even though, by the way, due to quote unquote world events going on right now, uh, I think everybody pretty much has extensions on that by three months. So, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. But um, no, I, I don't know. I think it's just um, because when we were kids, we had so little life to compare up to that point is, you know, maybe we were we'd only been alive for eight years, nine years, 10 years or whatever. So um Two years felt like a lot when we've when you're comparing it to only eight or ten years on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, I've been watching this for a quarter of my life. So when we look at it, still, I think we look at it the same. We look at it like, oh, like it, it was it's, it was a quarter of our lives, but two years out of uh, in my case, thirty four years, it's just a drop in the water now. So exactly, but then if you got to go sit in prison for two years, it fucking gets really long again. Well, I mean, especially when you're taking dicks in the mouth and ass every night. Well, see, that's the fucking, that's the perks of it. I always thought if you were a guy that preferred dudes, wouldn't prison be like a great thing? It's like, it's like a man pussy on tap. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to be raped, but well, like. It's I'm not a, saying <laughs> raped. I'm not saying raped, but like, I'm pretty sure minus the, uh, the power moves, like people that rape each other just for the, the dominance portion of it. But I mean, you'd think just the consensual acts at. Uh, aspect of it there'd be a lot of, you could fucking Isn't get laid kind of weird if you were that, like we know rape happens in prison and we just kind of we're okay with it it's a joke it's yeah. an open joke like shouldn't we still Even be trying to not in, let that happen well it's funny though because yeah we talk about um women's rights and and all this stuff and and me too movements and things like that and in canceling and exposing everybody but even those people don't give a shit about what goes on in prisons it's like as soon as Soon as you break the law and you're convicted, uh, I get it. 
um, you lose you lose freedoms, you lose things like that, but you still have rights to a exactly. degree. The you know, first still time a person. we found out that we wrongfully convicted somebody should have been the last time we were just okay with fucking rape and fucking, you know, the death penalty even, maybe. Well, they even make jokes about it uh, within the law enforcement. You know, like, for example, if they're trying to get um, a confession out of somebody or if they're trying to get somebody to dime somebody out, you know, they they will use those threats as if it's like part of the system. Like, you don't want to go to prison, man. You need to talk to us because if you go to prison, you know what they're going to do to you in prison? Like, they acknowledge yeah. it happens, right? It's almost like, hey, we've um, we've created our own. You can, you can see the <sighs> screen it's on. Yeah, I know. We've created our own cage full of hungry pit bulls to punish you for us. Like, you know, the system's going to punish you. We're going to give you so many years. But that invisible clause states we're sending you to 20 to life of getting your ass pounded and the shit kicked out of you in the bathrooms. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of fucked up how we just kind of accept that. Amazing. See, that's why I need to be president run right on the Communist Party. Yeah. Hey, if you were president tomorrow, man, is there anybody that you would pardon? Because the president can pardon folks, right? Every war criminal known to man. Did Charlie Manson finally die? Did he croak finally or no? He did. Yeah, he recently died. I would I would pardon all the nonviolent fucking uh, drug offenders. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know what the deal is there, man. I don't, especially now that like weed's illegal too. Like get all those people that were, you know, some people are getting out because of that, but they have to go through a, a system they have to get lawyers and they have to really push for this right and then some people are getting certain things up for it. but it's like just just make that a blanket thing it's like weeds legal it probably should have always been legal um all these people that are serving 40 year sentences for uh you know having two pounds of pot on them 20 years ago let them out like yeah i don't even think I remember it, nobody's even asking no one's saying restitution no one's saying pay them for the, like no but just let them out it go ahead oh yeah I remember hearing that Portugal does this thing where, like, pretty much every drug is legal. And, like, if you want to do it, you got to go to a hospital and, like, have supervision. And they haven't had, like, an overdose in, like, fucking uh, eight years or something. Uh -huh. And I remember hearing that and being like, wow. And then the person I was with was like, that's stupid. And I was like, no, if they get results like that, then it's stupid to not do it. In a way. Fucked up. No, but isn't it fucked up? I get it. depends on how they look at it. It, you could say, look, I was like, this shit's legal now. Like, these people shouldn't be in prison. So do you look at it as, well, they never should have been in prison? Or whether, whether or not the law was stupid to begin with, they still broke it back when it was illegal. You know? So I, I don't know. I think it's kind of funny, though, that um, what there are people still rotting in prison over for, 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 you know, convictions they had 10, 20, 30 years ago. There's It's now a multi-probably billion dollar industry. Like now people have businesses and they're making money and capital off of it. It's really weird. Oh, we just, yeah, we just got it. It just turned into a super soaker commercial. This is dank. It really does. I, I, yeah, I mean, these were hot at the day, those super soakers. And it doesn't have the brand on there, but clearly they were very relevant because the 90s was all about super soakers, uh, rollerblades. Did you have rollerblades? Oh, yes. Yeah, and then I, I I don't feel like kids really ride their bikes anymore, man. Maybe I'm just old and out of touch. I I'm I work from home, man, so I see out the window, and I, I, I don't ever see kids riding bikes anymore. I just don't think it's a thing. Oh, yeah. I, Fucking the world's getting too hot. Let's just stay inside. Fucking the air conditioner's inside. No, I don't know, man. Well, I just think that people have better shit to do, or, you know, they or so they think. They want to play Xbox Live. They want to, you know, be on their computers. I don't know. Maybe there are, and I just... If I'm president, I just thought of this. I'm fucking, I'm canceling the sun. The sun sucks. What has it ever done for me? That's what Beavis and Butthead said. The sun sucks. Exactly. The desert. Um, yeah, so the 90s super soakers were massive. Um, I'm trying to think. I had, roll every yeah, kids were rollerblading all the time, man. You go out on the weekends and people were rollerblading down the sidewalk and we were riding our bikes. Do you, you know what I had? Do you remember um, they were around for just a couple of years? So nobody probably remembers them. I need to pull up an old commercial. Do you remember Moto Sykes? Uh, what were they? Okay. Were they like they might shoes or something that had the rubber blades? Like I said, my my brain thinks of things in the past uh, in longer duration. So I say it was probably around for a couple of years, but it might have just been around for one holiday season. And I was the only kid that owned one. But basically, it was a bicycle 
that had a shell and an outer case and they made it look like a Harley or something. But it was just a it was just a bicycle um, with you know a whole bunch of I do shit. Remember that? Yeah. 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 And then um, <laughs> other than the aesthetic, it was just a bicycle, a big clunky bicycle with a you know worthless plastic all over it, and it had a a, a voice box um, near the handle, and it had two buttons, one button. And a little shitty speaker next to it, a little mono speaker. The bottom button, red button, would just go, like you're revving an engine. There's no engine there. Mm -hmm. The top one. See, it was a good thing that when he killed the king, his fucking, like, the the king, like, robe he had turned to blue so that it would match her outfit. Oh, yeah, yeah. The top button would say, it would be the same thing, but it would add some stupid announcer going, Moto Sykes. And I thought it was so cool. I'm like, oh, yeah, look at this bad bitch. I was like in the second grade. And then I was so stoked to get it on Christmas. I was like, oh, yeah. And then I took it outside. And then literally it was like Nelson from The Simpsons. The first kid saw it and just fucking made fun of me. And I'm like, oh. And I... (laughs) And then that's I, the worst. Yeah, and then, I, and, and then I felt bad, like, and I I was embarrassed to, <laughs> to have it <laughs> after that because I, I yeah it was one of those things where impressions got to me as a kid because that's that's always yeah they always do that too they're able to fucking bully you into submission <laughs> and I thought it was so cool but yeah man it's just like it turns out nobody else thought it was cool they thought it was just the stupidest thing in the world like oh you're so cool and you're Harley like all it takes you know and who knows maybe kids in my grade but wouldn't have cared but if they were so much as a year older oh that's a baby's toy you baby third grade like oh yeah you think you're on a harley like get a huffy you pussy yeah get a huffy get a huffy anyway you yeah talk about uh pissing in my cereal man i was so bummed when i was a kid the all the cool kids had mongoose or mongoose yeah i remember that too <laughs> see, I, I remember that ending. The fucking where he's looking in there. See, that's what he wanted him for. He just wanted a fucking kid to be trapped in there so he could fucking shoot his silver balls at him and hit him with his balls. Yeah. See, it's a fucking, it's a, it's a metaphor for like wanting to fuck, so I think. So let me, uh, so this episode's already over. The show, I've already for the dark anyway. Um, let's go ahead and go through a few questions. I might not be able to get through all of them, but we'll see. And if not, I'll definitely get to him on the next episode trust me so really quick uh ooh, starting off good with um somebody upset with us liar liar commentary roy versite says all caps by the way so he's screaming at us no one wants your commentary we want the full movie to watch no one cares guys please okay fair enough yeah he said please we should give it to him now yeah he's being really really flat about it robocop commentary uh david capper he says uh great session ah yes robocop the tried and true tale of the resurrection of nazi hunting cybernetic jesus set against the backdrop of post-vietnam reaganomics so let's unpack that please did i already read this uh, I don't think so. I didn't mark it. I always mark this stuff. He says, let's unpack this. And he says uh, he now adopts a sassy, gay, Filipino, African-American hairdresser voice. Because, girl, I'm about to go buck up in this. Hell yeah. Unpacking directive initiated. Robocop as Jesus can be seen in a way Murphy is shot through the hand and then dies uh, with his arms out as the sun shines through the windows behind him in the warehouse. This is his crucifixion. We then see Robocop tumble down through the floors of the parking garage, which represents his scourging and descent into the underworld. After Robocop removes his helmet, the wire circuitry pistons around his head are to represent the crown of thorns. And finally, on his way to arrest Francis uh, Baldiger, uh, he is seen to be walking on water while wading through his small puddle. See, this is dank. Whenever I'm president on the Communist Party, we're just going to get rid of fucking Jesus on the cross. We're going to replace it with the fucking depiction of Robocop on the cross. He says uh, in parentheses, one could also make an argument that Nancy Allen's character represents a Mary Magdalene archetype. Director Paul Verhoeven survived the Second World War as a child in Holland. So his dislike of the German war machine runs very deep, which is why he cast Kurtwood Smith with his high forehead and gold rim glasses as a bad guy that would serve as a lookalike for Heinrich Himmler, uh, who was the leader of the SS and founder of the Nazi Vatican, uh, Wibbleberg Castle in the Bavarian Alps. Google that shit, he says. It's very creepy. Uh, My dick would run deep in Nancy Allen <laughs> while we're on the top. He says the Ed 209 uh, is based off the Huey gunship, a helicopter that was widely used by uh, American forces during Vietnam. It was developed by Bell Helicopters, I think he says, and made a very tidy profit for the American military industrial complex. Ed 209 represents the Huey gunship coming home and being used for, quote unquote, urban pacification. Okay, I'm done. D. 
P.S. He says the 2014 remake of RoboCop isn't that bad if you watch it thinking it's a gritty PG-13 reimagining of Inspector Gadget. Trust me. I mean, I have to watch it. I'll give it a shot and I'll try and go into it with those goggles on. It fucking it makes Matthew Broderick's movie look like the fucking uh, what was what was the fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger quote? Look like uh, the babysitter. Oh, like it makes Mr. Freeze makes the Terminator look like a babysitter. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I, I'm not even really going to read this comment, but you know, somebody we have those people that'll post links to the real movies, and they're clearly spam. And sometimes I catch them and I delete them. And this is it's like all kanji lettering, and it's hey, here's the full movie of Issa, you know, Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS. Watch here, and they get like a million likes. Like why? You guys know it's spam. <laughs> why is everybody like? It? You sure it is? You sure it's not an actual movie? Everything about the channel that posted it, everything about the way the message looks, it it's spam. Okay. You know what I mean? And then the, people like it, so I, whatever. I need to delete that, though. See, that's what we got to do. We just got to, instead of label them commentaries, just say it is the movie. Then the people that come here looking for the movie will just like it, because we said it was. Yeah, yeah, for sure. RoboCop 2 commentary, uh, Will and Matt's excellent podcast. Will had said, I had a blast doing these RoboCop commentaries. They've really shown how far I've come as a podcaster, and the two commentaries had a nice flow and feeling to them. Compare that to the Mortal Kombat Annihilation commentary from last year, where you can tell I was still learning the ropes of podcasting. Shooting your ropes of podcasting is more like it. Then again, oh, yes. he says, everyone has to start somewhere. True that. Uh, while doing some rearranging, I came across my old binders I used to use to store all my handwritten notes and printed out reviews back when I started writing. My early material wasn't the best, but I kept at it and got better. And as they say, the only way to go up from here is up. Uh, nevertheless, it was fun. As of this writing, Matt and I finished recording our Terminator commentary as well. So it'll be interesting to see how ours differ from your Terminator commentary you have down the pipeline. Well, take care, dudes. Uh, so obviously, like I said, we're about a month delayed on these comments our terminator stuff's been out for some weeks now but uh yeah so check out uh his uh commentary on that as well and see and see how it uh, stacks up uh ours was with goat so it probably had a very very different type of flow but no dude it was cool mm-hmm. and you're right everybody's got to start somewhere i remember when riverman and i started this we were definitely green around the gills back or zach has definitely had an evolution that i i can't even describe like yeah, your evolution oh, yes. has gone all over the place and uh you you're right you can only go up i mean by by the law of some kind of science somewhere if you put in the time the hours and the practice you have to get better right i mean you're not going to get worse at least so mm-hmm. keep up the good work and 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 nice segue everybody check out uh, the debut episode of the game slice that's will and matt's show on our network um that will i, I if my timing is correct You'll be hearing it in two days if it, but you know, whatever, just look on the channel um, and show and show him some support as well, because, uh, you know, it's tough starting a new show. Feedback is appreciated. Be candid, be honest, but be respectful. Uh, okay. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Night of the Demons 2 commentary. Mike Bloodsworth just says horrible video. Well, fair, fair enough. Hell yes. <laughs> That's what we strive for. Horrible. Ishmael Premier, uh, sorry, uh, Robocop, these, I'm going to read some Robocop 2 commentaries. Ishmael Premier says, I saw this 10 year old podcast with the darkest jokes, the devil's jokes. I spent a year trying to subscribe and listen to this cast because I knew what was behind these jokers. mics was simply and purely dank. <laughs> That's like, uh, sometimes I use that as a meme too. I say the darkest memes. The devil's memes. Yeah. Or the dankest the memes dank- or something like yeah, that. You've done that before on the show. No, man, appreciate it, Schmel, dude. You're always uh you're always watching our shit and you're always appreciative. So thank you so much. And uh to to somehow connect us to a uh, classic movie quote. It's flattering. But um oh, yeah. yeah, let's see. Uh Witch King, he says on Robocop two. Guyver 2 is an excellent film. He also states every time Aaron and Max start talking Mortal Kombat, a clip of Zach. A clip of Zach plays saying, you are listening to MKAFM, Mortal Kombat Autism, in a DJ voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if only. Amazing. I kind of thought he was going to do some shit like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, anyway, well, I got to. The thing is, is when Matt comes on, if you guys caught our live stream, it was kind of like a bonus episode. You guys can check it out. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we have to say, I feel like I got to talk about Mortal Kombat and shit that I know is going to suck Mac in. Because Mac was spacing, man. If you watch that live stream, he was... He was fucking faded as shit. I could, I could, I could tell he was tired as fuck by the end. Yeah, of he was faded as hell, man. So uh, sometimes I gotta talk about the MK just to to feel make him feel. Sometimes he doesn't feel included or anything. Like 
<laughs> he was tight. He was toe up. Yeah, he was very toe up, and he was like saying he was saying shit that I didn't know where it was coming from. He's like, well, you know. Aaron asked and asked me something. What else? And then he interrupted me and he was like talking to the chat. I'm like, I, what are you talking about? I asked and Zach was talking to Mac. Is that you didn't just because you didn't say anything doesn't mean I don't know. He was fucking tore up, man. You're right. But it's, it was it was a fun commentary. Man. So you can check it out. We did it for Scream 3, which, by the way, we got to do Scream 4 probably next. I don't mind doing, you know, it's not quite back to back, but I don't even care if we did another live for it. If you want to. Maybe oh. I thought I think it's so much fun doing that. Um, Pink Flamingos. Antonio Carlos oh, yeah. Cuna. He just says pie. I'm pretty sure that's like in Spanish, some kind of swear word. If anybody knows Spanish, let us know. Oh, he, he's referring to that scene with the talking asshole. He, I refer to it as a pie too. <laughs> okay. It really looks like a pie. Nah, oh, yeah. it's, it's P A I. He probably just means, I don't know. Probably means something bad. Um, Adrian Mendoza on Robocop two says, Aaron, are you truly all right? I'm worried. This isn't the first time you've lost control of your bowels. Remember the couch, by the way, Zach, can you send me that dick pic? Thanks. Oh, not dick pic. Oh, yes. He meant the pic of my shit, my leg. Yeah, we should release that as a, a Patreon perk. A Patreon for <laughs> Dude, uh, the couch, man. Did I tell you guys about the couch? I must have. Uh, must have. I must have. But let me tell you, if this is the same couch that I'm thinking of, this was way worse than that, man. At least um, the couch was in a home and I was sitting down. So nothing ran down my legs or anything. You know, thing, you know what I mean? It just it was a bigger mess uh yeah but thanks for not judging me too hard adrian hopefully zach's kind i don't want to put in that picture out anywhere twilight zone the movie oh that's exploited cinema my bad i'm not gonna read that because you guys are fucking coming back i guess there's another exploited cinema coming down the pipeline so are were you guys i can't recall were you guys reading comments uh we didn't get to because uh, i had to leave early so whenever that new next one goes down i mean since maybe you should uh yeah read the comments you know, since it's on this channel you might have better access to them so we'll save yeah. that but um that was like i guess i guess he's playing in uh am i getting the title right color and space is that what it's called mm -hmm. that, that movie? yeah so be on the lookout for that um let's see Shh, cabin fever commentary king man says g like i guess like we're straight up g's i don't know what that means uh new beginnings sport the action or movie revival i don't know what is this oh this is so funny <laughs> okay so somebody fucking uh messaged some bullshit this is on a classic btm show uh probably something that's like 10 years old um, and we were talking about, uh, I, I felt like action movies were seeing a bit of a resurgence, you know, eight, nine years ago, uh, especially in the home video market. And that's just what I think the episode was based around. Anyway, a guy by the name of Wolf Creek, he just said trivial Americans with a fi middle finger emoji, America next month will become dust. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, to dust. and then Zach just, uh, replied, I pray you're right. <laughs> exactly see he he said in a month so then i said a reminder in a month to troll him again so, yeah. uh, that's coming up soon and he put that on the instagram the the comment in this calendar circle that's so funny uh yeah anyway uh problem child three junior in love veronica sharma says hello so funny with laughy emojis hell yeah hell yeah hell yeah veronica all right, let's see here bloodless rvc on let's oh that's sorry that's mac and zach sorry i'm getting too ahead of myself Scream commentary, the first scream we did. Brian Kennedy says, Satanic Panic sucked. What a waste of time. Same with the other horror metal movie recently, uh, We Summon the Darkness. Uh, you guys should check out Summer of 84 on Shudder. Decent flick. Good hearing all your guys' rants again. Satanic Panic did suck. I, I thought it was not good. I felt like the babysitter was doing the same shit. Did you watch Satanic Panic, Zach? I did not. Or is he talking about the actual Satanic Panic from the 80s? Well, when it actually happened. I was talking about the movie on this episode. That So oh, okay. he's got to be referring to that. Yeah, the movies, it does the same thing. It's trying to be like horror comedy and kind of tongue in cheek and spoof. And they even do the whole occult thing. And I think they did all that shit in The Babysitter and they did it way better. So um, I agree we with you. We Summon the Darkness has that hot chick in it from uh, fucking Texas Chainsaw. Jessica Biel? Oh, no. a Dario, whatever her name is. Something oh, Dario. Yeah. yeah, she's hot, man. Um, I don't I've never heard of We Summon the Darkness. It just got added to Netflix. Okay. Um, I did well, he says it's not very good. I, I did watch Summer of eighty four last year though. That was decent. Dang. Did you watch that? Nope. Yeah, you should watch it. It's fun. I mean, it's kind of in vogue right now to 
based movies in the eighties, like ever since Stranger Things, it's it's been real hip to revisit that decade, or maybe just enough time has passed now. Like, you know, we've been over 30 years, so now we can really look back on that as super retro. But um anyway, if you're not too sick of them doing that recently, it's a fun movie. Let's see. Well, this machine fuck, that's more Mac and Zach the Willies, dude. You guys got comments you gotta read, so a lot of oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of cool shit. I'm getting jealous. All right, uh Terminator with feature in the goat. We're going to read a slew of these real quick. Bloodless RVC. Um, he's well, sorry. Bloodless RVC. He says Taco Bell, a fat doobie and nothing to do except watch along with you guys. They should have stopped making Terminator movies after part two. As soon as I heard Edward oh, Furlong yeah. got whacked in the new movie and shit all over his legacy. I knew I would never watch it. Even if it's free on cable TV, I'm turning the channel. What's up with that girl that looks like a boy in the lead role. It's like the producers fed into his ideology that there's no gender. Rick Rossovich, the boyfriend that gets killed, and Arnold played in a Tales from the Crypt episode called The Switch. Nice little horror facts. Anyway, time to spark up. Cheers. Thanks, Bloodless. See, we should make a remake of Six Pack by Black Flag and, and change it to his lyrics. I got Taco Bell, a fat doobie, and nothing to do. Yeah. That'd be dank. No, but I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, man. It's, um, it just, it's a shit stain on the legacy. Of Terminator. Ishmael Permu, he simply, he did another quote. He says, this is, this is it, Revival House, your big break in YouTube. Welcome to prime time, beta. Ha 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 ha. Hell yes. I've been wanting to watch Freddy again, man. Uh, I think it's been, I think the last time we watched him is when we did a commentary for him. Uh, so it's been over a year. So I need to have a marathon. Oh yeah. Well, let's see here. Uh, episode. Okay. Yeah. Keep going with Terminator. Will and Matt, Will says, uh, yeah, this commentary was good, but it's got nothing on our Terminator commentary we uploaded. I'm joking. This was very well done, and as always, Goat kept the conversation on focus and on point. It seems like a curse that after James Cameron does a great sequel, the one that comes after it fails to live up to the first two. Then again, he is doing 20 Avatar sequels, so his golden touch only goes so far. With that said, the original Terminator is definitely a great example of less is more, and there's a lot of little details to pick up on repeated viewings, uh, which you didn't notice the first time around. Out. The problem with the later Terminators is they can't bring anything new to the table, nor can they tell a compelling story. They all feel like fan fiction. I feel like Hollywood has reached a creative burnout, and I know that I'm not the only one to think that. Cinemas have become uh, so plagued with franchise pictures and trend-chasing flicks that it makes you wonder, where did we go wrong? Plus, I'm more impressed by special effects for movies which came out 30 to 40 years ago than the CGI nonsense you see now. Case in point, Terminator Dark Fate. Like Aaron and Goat said, the movie could have gone back to low-budget basics, but it didn't. It felt like yet another franchise flick, one which banks on established names rather than giving fresh um, something fresh. I hope studios take the time during the pandemic to reevaluate the current movie landscape, but I doubt it. To quote ACDC, come on, come on, kneel before the money. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, took the words right out of my mouth. I agree wholeheartedly. It doesn't have to have been low-budget, but just low-budget for a blockbuster. You know, I mean, just fifty million dollars. I wouldn't necessarily call that low budget, but that's for the kind of movie that they keep trying to make. It would have been a hit. It would have been a bona fide hit, and they would have been able to make more. It's just uh, you don't know where that money goes when you watch a movie like Dark Fate. I'm like, where did this money go? All these shitty effects up the nose, up the Snow nose, flurries. up the nose. Uh, David Capper on Terminator. He says, "Great episode, awesome lineup, classic revival." But wait. There is a BTM mystery afoot. Yesterday when I listened to this, I went through your comment section and there were four comments, not three. I forget who it was, but someone left a list of possible exploitation suggestions, which included one called castration exploitation, which I thought was Hell astoundingly yeah. brilliant. But perhaps it was their suggestion of the station exploitation. Fuck. You know what? I think you have to bleep that out, Zach. <laughs> bleep oh, yeah. out that word. Um, that the comment was removed. And uh, really quick, I'm going to break your comment up. I think you're right. Because I went back to look for this comment, and even when he typed that in this comment that I'm reading now, he he you know changed the spelling so it wouldn't get flagged. A hundred percent, man. Because I, I I saw the alert of the comment he's talking about, and I kind of read it in like an alert status, like a notification. And then later, when I went to go check it out, it was it was gone. But anyway, he says if that is in fact what happened, and it got removed. The reason I bring this up is because the past comments I have purposely misspelled key triggering words to hopefully slip past whatever algorithm monitors YouTube comments. A recent example of this is when I equated my Canadian upbringing, upbringing to the plot <laughs> to the plot of Sound of Music, and I didn't actually spell the word, you know, N A Z I right. 
that he, oh, yeah. he, I, I think it would have gotten flagged. He said, I think he said he, uh, yeah, he probably spelled it a little differently or did it like he did here where he spaced it out, you know? Anyway. Yeah, he- that's a big thing. They're, they don't want, like, advertised. Like, because there's a lot of those people on fucking YouTube now. <laughs> they don't, they don't, yeah, the algorithm bots, they don't know that we're just some kind of, like, weird. I, I, I See, even now I'm struggling not to call it certain things. What? How do I, mm-hmm. how do I dance around this? They don't want us to think that we're some kind of let's just say political channel with a weird agenda, right? Mm-hmm. They don't know. They don't know what we're just like talking about commentaries. You could be historical. I think we could be talking about history. We could be a boring history podcast. Uh, and yeah, that, that's how fucked up their algorithm is. There was a guy that was uploading like archival, like history videos, and he was getting flagged for like World War II stuff. Yeah, it, I think uh, with as much... With as much money as Google has, man, they need to get smarter bots or something because, you know, erasing history is not the answer. And you can't just erase people that are doing stuff uh, from an educational standpoint. That's not good. Um, Anyway, he says, my point is, he says, it really sucks that we have to self-censor just to communicate with friends in a digital community. I get it. Everyone can see these comments and become offended. But by the same token... Learn to take a joke, you gosh darn snowflake. The grown-ups are taking uh, are <laughs> the grown-ups are talking about RoboCop. Drink your matcha and shut the fuck up, he says. Any hoots, good oh, job, man. strong bad. Strong what? <laughs> Any hoots, good job, strong bad. Deep cut. I guess I don't know the reference. Do you? <laughs> what do you say? Good job. He, he 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 quotes. It's a quote. He said, "Any hoots." Quote. Good jorbs, strong bad. Deep cut. He says in parentheses. I don't. <laughs> You might have been able to, you might have to help us out with that one. <laughs> but I've I, been looking through here though, and I found that episode you were talking about. It's on volume five, and it's uh, episode three. Damn! So I got to watch it. But yeah, so I'm gonna. I know we've talked about that topic that Capper's saying right now uh, in the last handful of episodes. But yeah, don't get upset if if you think you you uploaded a comment and you know don't uh, don't automatically assume we ignored it or deleted it because. Never, not even once, even, even critical stuff, um, even, you know, questionable stuff. We don't delete it. I don't delete anything. And we even read the negative stuff. So, um, give us the benefit of the doubt that that's what's happening and just be sure to cleverly avoid trigger words. Like he's saying and misspell them. I mean, I'm not saying I want you to put like crazy racist hate speech or anything like don't do that shit because I won't tolerate that. But you know, if you're saying stuff in a certain context, like Capper saying, and like, uh, you know, uh, the, the commenter whose comment got removed, just, just dance around those words that you think are going to be trigger words and misspell them or, or do something else. But anyway, I can't for the life of me remember who it was, but if you're listening right now, um, I thought it was a cool idea. Um, the, the exploitation idea even though I, I was even before that got flagged and removed, I already thought to myself when I read it, I'm like, man, I don't think we could call it, you know, the M O L word E S T exploitation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I, if, 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 if that didn't survive in a comment section, that's not gonna like YouTube will yank us down fucking quick. Um, we should do a lactation exploitation. Interesting. Oh, we could just do nothing but those videos of that subcategory where we're breastfeeding on Pornhub. Like oh yeah, like sucking mommy's titty. You want to suck on mommy's titty? AKA what you jack off to if your parents check your browser history. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, I mean, I have seen a video like that one time in the past, and I just remember it's the only thing I would think of when you brought that up. It was a video with an Indian woman, and she was like a middle aged Indian woman, like in her forties, and she had, and she was very like she was a mother. She looked like she had fucking had four kids at least. And she had big droopy titties and she was Indian and she was just going, you suck on mommy titties. You'll come on, come on, suck oh, on yes. mommy titties. <laughs> and then, and that's I, my fetish. that's my big finish. And that's all I think about. But anyway, uh, thanks capper, man. Um, you're always, like I said, a very wise old owl you are and you always um, share your wisdom with us. So, but everybody just listen to capper and you won't, you won't go wrong. So, and help us out with that reference. Cause I'm actually not sure what it's for. Um, Terminator commentary, Geo Kalunga. He says, um, congrats on 4k subs. You guys deserve it. Also, I had an older comment deleted. Fuck Google. But you know, Geo was smart because he put fuck Google P H U C K. Fuck Google. Oh yes. So, uh, he's taken extra, extra caution. So that's how you do it, man. And thank you, man. Uh, we, we got even more than that now. So, and, uh, we're very happy that, uh, the subscriber base is coming in. All you guys have been super, super cool to us. 
And uh, hopefully we can just keep not disappointing you and putting out more content. And uh, hopefully the family keeps growing, man. We couldn't be more excited about it. So slow and steady wins that race for sure. Thanks, Gio. Uh, Are you afraid of the dark? The tale of the ghastly grinner? Douglas Janusk. He just says, why he talk like that? I'm assuming he means you. (laughs) Why wouldn't I? I mean, and and it was funny as I read this in your voice. Why he talk like that? Oh, yeah. So I, I, Douglas, I don't know. He talks like this because he, um, was very influenced by a guy named Corey G, but he kind of took what he did and he put it through a weird Zach filter. And, and now it's his own thing, I guess. Yeah. Cause Corey G is like, he's doing the Steven Seagal. Zach doesn't sound like Steven Seagal. The only thing you could say is similar now is that they're both kind of doing a whisper sometimes, but one is clearly Steven Seagal. And I don't know what the hell Zach is supposed to be. It's just Zach. Um, oh, yeah. But anyway, hopefully despite Zach's weird voice, you like the episode. Um, the Terminator commentary, Maxwell Unosh. He's, oh, I think this is the guy. Maxwell, is this the, did you, is this your comment that got deleted? He says, did my comment get deleted on this video? Strange. Anyway, keep being the best channel on YouTube. All right. Dog. So, uh, see, we should have deleted that. Th- so, okay. So I, I'm pretty we sure it was, best. it was yours, Maxwell. So I think that was a good idea. We might not be able to title it exactly as bluntly as you put it, just because we'll get ripped down. But, um, there's definitely a lot of movies we could, we could uh, explore with that. Um, and yeah, I, I did comment you on there and um, yeah, just like what Capper said, we just got to dance around the the terms that we use, but what did uh, actually Capper responded to you? I'm going to see what he says. He says, yep, pretty sure it was your exploitation suggestion comment. <laughs> they were, st- they were stellar ideas and I shouldn't have responded and I should have responded right away, but figured there's no way that'll get flagged. Incorrect. He says, I think there should now be a censor exploitation month. Oh, that's good too, man. That might take a little bit more thinking. Sensor exploitation. What do we do for that? Um, no, but that's cool. Good suggestions, man. Uh, Maxwell and Capper. Uh, let's see. Oh man. Okay. Somebody commented on, see, well, go ahead. I, I'm really clever because the thing is, just I, I've like, I've, I've made you think that this whisper is part of my shtick, but it's really because I'm in the bushes of my next door neighbor still on their internet. And I want them to hear me. <laughs> Okay. Somebody commented on a really old video um, that Riverman I did. And I remember when this was because I was in Russia. It's a video, actual video. And it was, um, we did a, like a quick review on the walking dead season two, episode four. So this would have been in 2011. Right. And, and, and you can actually watch it in video, which is relevant to the comments, but I'm, it's split screen and I'm in this apartment I was at in, in St. Petersburg, Russia and river man's in his old apartment. Anyway, listener by the name of Vida Danit and it's, they got an avatar Pepe frog. <laughs> they say, I thought that river man was Zach. I'm dumb as fuck. <laughs> so, oh yeah. River so, man is Zach or, or like, were you smart the whole time? And it's just the reality that's dumb as fuck. No, but that's that's totally understandable, man, because we really don't have too much video video content. So if you hear all our voices for so long and, you know, and you see like pictures on our socials and stuff like our NWO photo. Right. Mm-hmm. I guess you don't you don't necessarily know whose voice goes to who. Um, there's obviously some giveaways sometimes, I guess. But yeah, anyway, Riverman is, in fact, the guy with the glasses. So I wear glasses, too. Shit. OK, well, Riverman's the tall one. Oh, shit. Riverman is the one wearing the ball. Oh, shit. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying, man. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. we just got to make more appearances, man. Once the quote unquote world events are done with and we definitely want to hit up some more conventions, man, and make some appearances and stuff and maybe produce more video content. And you know what? You can always catch uh, some live stuff. We want to do more and more and more of those live commentaries. They're a fucking hoot. So, um, yeah. Hopefully we we clear up the confusion. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street commentary, 1984, the original. Bloodless RVC says, I sure would like to know what the hell you were doing shacking with three kids in the middle of the night, especially a lunatic delinquent like Lane. R.I.P. John Saxon, such a great actor, he says. Watching mm-hmm. this again, it still holds up as arguably the best horror movie ever made. On one occasion, when I was younger, I was up for three days, totally sleep deprived, and remember watching this movie in a dream state, recalling how much this movie taps into your subconscious. Wes Craven knew what he was doing for sure. Hell yeah, dude. Couldn't agree more. And I think uh, with a lot of films that eventually spawn off into franchises, it, it, it's kind of easy to kind of forget how potent its its roots were. 
So same thing, you know, so Freddy Krueger, obviously he grew in popularity. He became such a figure in pop culture. He was literally hawking fucking sodas and shit, right? Mm -hmm. It was used for advertisement placements and all this stuff. Everybody knew him. And it, and I get, it kind of makes it uh, cartoony. And it did. He became a reflection of that. You watch Freddy's Dead. It's a giant advertisement. It's a live action Looney Tunes cartoon. Um, and you kind of forget, like you're looking at the big picture a little too much. But if you strip it down and you ignore all the sequels and you watch that original movie and let's say that's all that existed, it's scary. It's a it's a pretty freaky movie and it's super original. And I could say the same thing about the Hell, Hellraiser franchise. You, you might be able to look at it in passing and say, man, you mean that franchise that has all those shitty direct video video sequels um, that never actually feature the guy on the cover? Yeah, mm -hmm. you could say that. But if you ignore all that and you take into consideration that usually when uh, filmmakers get the funds to make a project, they usually have to sign over their soul or the rights to the IP. Right. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what happens. You know, Clyde Barker, he didn't make all those shitty sequels pass through. He didn't, he, he was a part of the second one, but other than that, man, it's like the, if, if there's something successful, that production company who funded you, they're going to make money off of it. And they're going to bleed it dry because they're not the creator. They don't really have integrity like that. All they know is, Hey, we want to make money. And at the end of the day, that's, that's their job. So, I mean, they know how to do their job well. So whatever they're doing what they're going to do. So I, I try and separate that. I don't hold it against Clive Barker and I don't hold that shit against um, the original Hellraiser. I like to imagine its own thing as its own thing. So uh, but yeah, it's scary, man. Nightmare on Elm Street uh, was pretty ahead of his time. Let's see here. Uh, the Terminator as well. Witch King. He says, I declare next month shark exploitation. Yeah. yeah, that's not a bad idea because like if we watched like deep blue sea and stuff like that, I, you'd probably hear me cringing. Cause like for some reasons sharks creep me out. Yeah, and I I I posted I posed some some examples we could do. We, you know, if we stayed original, like we don't have to do the obvious choices, but if we got creative with it, we could do Jaws 3D, Deep Blue Sea 2, Shark Tale, <laughs> uh, Mako, the Jaws of Death, that fucking killer well. I remember like uh, as a kid, my dad took me to see the Flipper movie with fucking what's his name, the Hobbit. And the uh, fucking oh, yeah. Crocodile Dundee. And yeah, like, Paul Hogan. Yeah. In the middle of the movie, all of a sudden, they just introduce a fucking hammerhead shark, which fucking terrified me, seeing that on the big screen. Uh, we could do the, we could do Sharktopus. Ret we could do a retro rampage for the game Sewer Shark. Uh, marathon commentary of the complete series of Street Sharks cartoon. The possibilities are endless. I got that box set. Fucking Street Sharks. Hell yeah. Oh, you do? Jawsome. <laughs> yeah, Jawsome. Wow, I didn't know they had a box set. Is it just one season, though? It's actually, it's not a box set. It's just like fucking, it's like two seasons. And it's, it even comes with the digital code now. Mine did. Well, oh, it comes with the digital code now? Mm-hmm. I have to see how much that is. But you know what, though? If we decide we want to tackle that as our next, like, quote-unquote, exploitation, I would be down with that. And I think it would be fun to do, like, a, maybe, like, a little mini live marathon. Or like, do the Street Sharks. Maybe not the whole damn series. But, um... You know, like a little live like marathon. I'd be down. Oh, yeah. So maybe, Zach, you should upload those or something. I might look. It can't be expensive, right? Mm-hmm. It's got to be cheap. I'll see like what's 15 up. 15 bucks when I got it. Yeah, man. So we're definitely going to consider that hardcore Witch King. Thanks, dude. Uh, so here we go. Uh, going to try and burn through these. I'm actually going to try and burn through all of them. But Terminator 2 Judgment Day commentary. Uh, will said, one day, one day the prophecy will be fulfilled and Edward Furlong will be on Revival House's show. Then Aaron can ask him all his deep burning questions about Pet Cemetery 2. All the while, Zach tells Edward how he'd Edward his furlong, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. And I think you do. On a serious note, Zach, stop feeling down. You and the shenanigans you pull on Aaron are what define this channel. If Aaron is Dan Aykroyd, you are John Belushi. Tell you what, oh, yeah. we're going to go to Arizona next summer, and while Beta Boy Aaron promotes Revival House at the Horror Con we're at, I'll use my methods to hook you up with a fine-looking, tattooed, horror-loving chick. I pride myself oh, as yeah. a modern Casanova. Zach, never give up, never surrender. Wait, Will, weren't you asking Mac and Zach for like a lot? <laughs> Hell yeah, see, he knows now. Yeah, you know, so the, the, the teacher has become the master. No, the exactly. student. The student has become the teacher. Mm -hmm. I got you. It's Mr. Miyagi shit. Yeah, rock on, man. Hopefully this stuff all comes back to normal and we can because I really want I really want you guys to come out. I want Zach to come out. I want Mac to come out to Arizona. It'd be a blast. It will. Same thing. It's a cool con out here. And uh, we got sunshine all the time. So uh, it would be rad. Uh, let's see here. You can see my ugly face. 
Hell yeah. And all of our ugly faces. So, uh, right. Blood, Bloodless RBC Terminator 2, he says, um, depression sucks, Zach. Trust me. If it makes you feel any better, it's been great listening along with all your favorite commentary, with all your movie commentaries. Being on lockdown with this whole quote unquote, I'm going to call it world events. Uh, with very little human contact can get very lonely. Even with all the great bud and mushrooms, you still need some sort of human connection. And you guys kind of fill that missing gap for me. You guys should really do a Cyborg Nights 89 commentary for the finish of Cyborg Month. Okay, so f- first off, we're reading these late. So I apologize. Yeah, we obviously didn't get around to Cyborg. Um, but that doesn't mean we're not going to do it. And I think we could do it for a Van Damme exploitation because I've been wanting to do a Van Damme exploitation for a long time. Zach's not the biggest action guy, but I, I think that's where that might fit. So never give up. Dang. Never give up hope. Uh, and also, thank you for the kind words, Bloodless. That's really nice, man. I, I feel you with that. Um, See, his name is Bloodless because all the blood left my head and went to my dick because I love this guy. Yeah, well, so we could spin that back around and put it back on you guys and you bloodless because, yeah, dude, right now it's rough and it's easy to become a little frayed at the ends being on lockdown and just having little interaction. So uh, same thing. We Zach and I, we still have our connection and Mac and we're all recording and that's a lot of fun that helps keep us sane and, and reading these comments from you guys. It really, really, really does make it easier. And we've done a couple of these live shows during all this this stuff. And that helps too. And we can actually interact with you guys. So uh yeah, it's definitely a two way street, man. Uh it's definitely I mean, Zach, do you concur? Oh yes. Yeah. So uh everybody stay strong out there. Let's not go crazy. Let's not kill each other. And uh we'll keep b- pumping out content, man. And hopefully, like I said, those lives are a lot of fun. And last time we had a really cool turnout, so We'll keep doing it, man. If you guys keep wanting to show up and we'll, uh, we'll sort of, I almost said relieve everybody's stress, but it sounds like we're going to give you hand jobs, uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll help everybody just have a good time and, 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 you know, forget about all the bullshit for just a, a couple of hours, but all right. Thanks bloodless man. You're the man. Uh, let's see. You got a lot of, let's watch the Willie's commentary comments, man. So, uh, the Terminator again with goat. Adrian Mendoza says, great episode. Goat was great. Thanks, Aaron, for reading my comment. I agree with you, Aaron. Arnold's manhood swinging freely looks delicious. I didn't fucking say that. <laughs> putting words I in my said mouth. That. I was thinking okay. it at least. <laughs> yeah. Like, like putting words in my mouth. What, what if my grandma read that comment, but she didn't fucking re- listen to the. <laughs> I like to put a swinging dig in my mouth. <laughs> it's a shame we were not rewarded seeing Michael Bean's beautiful schlong. He says this film can exactly. totally be considered a horror film. Well, I agree with you at least on one of the, one on one part of your message. Uh, it, it definitely is a horror movie. Uh, uh, Devin Duncan on Terminator 2 Judgment Day Extended Cut Commentary. He says, awesome episode, guys. Great commentary. Love this movie. And Pet Cemetery 2 is an underrated sequel. Fuck, yes, oh, yes. it is. It's one of those things where I know it, it's Zach says he likes the first one a little better, but I, I think they're apples and oranges. I, I believe they did an awesome job of doing their own thing, and it stands up on its own. Did you get the new part two Blu-ray? Yeah, I have it. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Remember I told you I, I had my girlfriend watch it and she was just, oh, yeah. you know, fucking on it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's a good thing because if they would have tried to make a movie and it was Mary Lambert too, which is so weird because Pet Cemetery 2 feels like it was a totally different director. But the fact that Mary Lambert uh, made a sequel and she decided not to cash in on the exact same tone of the first one. It was great because it probably wouldn't have been as good because if you can't beat the original, just do something different. And that's like one of the darkest fucking adaptations. Like, see, women can go fucking dark. That's dank shit. Uh, Yeah, for sure. Uh, License to Drive. Um, This is a classic BTM commentary that was featuring Bat32 and Dale Roy from way back in the day. Uh, Pirate Tube, listener by the name of Pirate Tube. He just says the Whisper King himself. Is he talking about Corey G? Oh, yeah. Was Corey G on that one, too? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So I can't read the whole title. So, wow, man. Yeah, the Whisper King. Uh, I didn't bother putting Corey G because he was just a part of the show at that time. Ah, uh, I got you. Oh yeah, that makes sense. There you go. Lasted for about I don't know three weeks, <laughs> four weeks. And uh, so Zach, you you have the opportunity of actually listening to all the. I should listen to these sometime just to go down memory lane. But how often does he troll me with the whole California Dreams and Steven Seagal and Lorenzo Lama shit? Is it is it is it, is it, is it as much as I remember it being? Hell yeah! Like uh, at least eight times in one episode. <laughs> No, it's a, 
Yes. <laughs> okay, on Halloween 2018 commentary, uh, featuring Mac on that one, Devin Dungan also says, great commentary. I enjoy the 2018 film, but it does have flaws. Looking forward to Halloween Kills next year. Uh, my uh, hopes are not going to be super high for it, but of course I'm going to see it. And we're going to make a thing of it, and we'll do a lot of content covering it and commentaries. And, you know, uh, I would I would do you know, cinema enema and all that stuff. Uh, but I hope it's good. And I think mm-hmm. I was saying on the, I think it was cinema enema the last one we did um, for the coffin Joe trilogy that maybe it'll end up being pretty good because they're not weighed down by the pressure of making a follow up. Cause that's what the first one was. It's mm-hmm. a follow up to the classic ones. And, but now that they've kind of reestablished their own Canon with this, you know, maybe uh, them taking this, maybe we won't be so pissed off at the liberties they take and their creative freedoms. I don't know. Uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, Mendoza, he says, I think Zach was on fire. Maybe Zach was depressed because he had to hear Josh go on about how women ruin everything when it comes to being in action films and that the liberal agenda, quote unquote, is ruining movies. I like Josh. (laughs) Hold on. He says, I like Josh. He seems like a good guy, but he comes off as a curmudgeon, uh, someone with a chip on their shoulder. Josh reminds me of Travis Bickle. Josh, why are you so angry? Aaron, it's strange that you've been all over the world, seen different cultures, but you still hold on to that Midwestern conservative philosophy you learned from your grandpa. Uh, Aaron, it's cool that you're checking out uh, Ghibli films, especially uh, Miyazaki's work. I recommend checking out Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. So, um, you know, Mendoza, you were giving a little bit of criticism uh, Josh's way. Uh, I think I know. Yeah, I I think I see. I, I've kind of twisted Josh's nipples about this too in the in the like our uh, fucking uh, conversations on the uh, messenger. Like uh, he'll say something, and I'll be like, "Dude, you're sounding like those fucking uh, those weirdos on the internet, those like super ultra like reactionary guys." He's like, "Fuck you, I'm not like those neck beards." But like, yeah, like I think uh, he's talking about like uh, like Adrian's thinking of those people on the internet that like they've decided they've they've made this false dichotomy where like. It depends on how far they go with it, like, depending on how far they are on the uh, incel forums. Some of them are okay with a, a, a white woman, but it's like, if if your character isn't a white male or a white woman, you are being, quote unquote, political. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and like, if you're being political, you've got to justify to me why you made this character a black lesbian woman when it could have been a white male. Like, it's uh, it's weird. It's like, uh, basically, they it's a weird... Like, entitlement. Like, uh, whatever I am is just a generic. Like, this is the archetype kind of generic for any character. Why would you divert from this? It's really weird. Well, I... Maybe it would be different if I went back and listened to the episode. All I know is like when we're actually recording it, I I can't, I don't remember that much. So I can't really tell I I caught anything. He didn't say that on the episode. I know. Like that's, I, from, from the way I remember when we were recording that T2 commentary, uh, more or less, I, I just kind of remember everybody kind of agreeing with the dark fate. It's possible he worded his opinions differently. Um, but maybe I interpreted them differently. I don't know, but I, the way I understood it and the way I, I remember the conversation going was we were all kind of in, in agreement. Like I said, I don't know if it's the way he worded it or maybe the uh, particular pieces he targeted in our criticisms. I, I'm, I'm really not sure, man, but God, it's, it's all good, man. Josh is a good dude. Um, like you said, and Travis Bickle might be a little bit heavy because I think even yeah, if he, I'm like Travis Bickle. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I know. And I I was it was funny because this whole thing turned into a thread, as you can imagine, with Josh commenting and me commenting. <laughs> and it was pretty funny. And uh, and I, I was just trying to, like, warm him up. I'm like, dude, if you got to be compared to a fucking street vigilante, at least, you you know, at least it's from a great movie. Oh, yeah. You know? So, but yeah. Anyway, uh, we appreciate your feedback, man, uh, as always as well. So uh, and, and Josh does, too, too, man. I mean, we, we love all fan or uh, listener interaction and all that stuff. So. Um, keep it coming, dude. And um, yeah, he's he's harmless. Would you fuck Travis Bickle? I mean, I mean that was uh, when De Niro was skinny; he was in shape. Oh yeah. No, the answer is still no, Zach. Um, but yeah, yeah. On don't breathe. Uh, practical philosophy simply commented: garbage. Okay, fair enough. Um, and he must be best friends with Sal, who commented on our Ken Park Cinema Enema, where he just put an emoji trash can. Hell yes. So basically, uh, he got even lazier and just put a trash, put the put the garbage trash can picture. But 
It is what it is, man. Uh, Josh James, of course, he commented on T2 saying uh, it was good times. He had a lot of fun doing it. It was good times, man. And we love Josh. And uh, I had, a, I think, the last month or so of these commentaries, the whole cyber exploitation, with the exception of Riverman bailing on T2, it, it went off pretty successful. It was fun having Goat on, River on, Will on, uh, Josh on, and keeping it up a mixed bag. And hopefully you guys did too, man. Um, I would think it would be pretty exciting. Terminator 2 Judgment Day, Blockwood 69 says, Another exquisite steaming pile of excrement featuring a killer trio. Daddy's Proud Boys. Return to the Living Dead Part 3 with Riverman would be cool if he's ever available. Uh, we did do that. Hell but yeah. I can't But I can't remember if River was on it. I'm sure he was, right? River was on uh, Return yeah, of the Living Dead 3. Because that's one I, I would have demanded River be a part of. Because that's the that's how our friendship started. We were talking about Return of the Living Dead. That's where his name came from. And that's mm -hmm. the first conversation we ever had when we sat next to each other in class first day of school. So, um, yeah, man. And I'm pretty sure I linked it for you in the comment here. But we did do it. So, check that out. Um, Josh James is great, he says. He's a great third-party addition to the merry band of pranksters. Aaron's Michael Bean impression is uncanny and hilarious. Cheer, cheer up, Zach. Your shit's good. Yeah, gearbox. Um, oh, yeah. No, for sure. Uh, block of 69. And that's the cool thing about discovering our channel somewhat later. Um, we've, we've literally got hundreds of videos on here or on the podcast services. It's, it goes balls deep. So um, it, it's still probably pretty easy to miss things. So I would suggest um, if, if there's some films that you might think uh, are obvious or think it makes sense for us to do and you want to request them, you might go look through our, our archives and our playlists and just make sure we haven't done it before. Cause there's a lot to dig through for sure. So a lot of content. Uh, mm -hmm. so thanks as always block. O. um, um, getting close to the end here. Uh, the mass commentary, not Rocky Dennis, but Jim Carrey, uh, Disney, by the way, I saw that. Was it t-shirt Joe? He's selling the, uh, the face mask, but it's the Rocky Dennis face below it. Amazing. <laughs> Dude, so it's so funny. Disney six five fan. That's the user. Disney six five fan writes on the mask. It's on Netflix now, so this will be funny to use. That's correct. I'm just gonna keep saying quote unquote real world events. We all wear face masks, metaphorically speaking. You know, um, there was an episode years ago of Goosebumps called The Haunted Mask, scariest shit ever, they say. And the mask 1994 is also a haunted wooden mask that turns green whenever someone wears it. Jim Carrey will always be Stanley Ipkiss, the mask, or Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber. I can't think of another actor to play Stanley Ipkiss. Uh, other than Carrie, the role was made for him. Plus, his chemistry with Cameron Diaz was good. It's party time, P A R T Y, because I gotta. Sorry, fellas, waste not. Wait, what? Sorry, fellas, waste not what not. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, basically, don't don't be sorry for uh, doing the quote of the movie. Odd. Oh yeah, he's making that movie sound like I want to watch it again. And I remember when we watched it, I was like. Yeah, I remember liking this more as a kid. Yeah, I'm that's like, the way yeah. you, you you get nostalgic feels to check it out. And you're like, oh, yeah, I still don't like it. That's me anyway. Cameron Diaz, though. Yeah, I never liked her. Never liked her. Disney fan, six, a Disney 6.5 fan. I never, I don't think I've seen you comment before. So thank you so much for, for uh, dropping some, um, some, some words for us to read. And uh, hopefully. Dank you, nugs. Yeah, dank nugs. Hopefully you dug what you heard and, and you're sticking around. You got subscribed for sure uh schizophreniac oh this is a good one zach schizophreniac commentary adrian uh he says listening to this again and enjoying every minute when will you guys do commentary for the sequel to schizophreniac we've been talking about that for such a long time hell yeah we need to and you know what's funny is if i ever find the uncut version of the original we need to do it again <laughs> why because i'll be like what the fuck is this so because i never saw that one i think for exploitation, the shark one is a great one. And we also have that other one um, from Matt or sorry, who, um, who, oh gosh, I already forgot who said it. The one that got doxxed, um, the one that got removed, the one that we can't say the words, the exploitation involving advantage being taken of people. Does that work? Um, anyway, those are great ideas for exploitation, but maybe we can do a couple of episodes here just to sort of clean out the uh, to-do list. You know, maybe we should knock out Scream 4 here next as a live or something. And I think we, we finally owe cruising to Omega. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I, it's it's been a long time coming to do Schizophreniac. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I, I could see the next couple of weeks being planned out by something like that. If, if Zach's down, I would do it. Maybe you'd want Josh on for Schizophreniac too as well because he was on the first one. But uh, yeah, man, uh, we're, you guys are helping us plan out the next uh, month and two months. So thank you for that. Uh, we haven't forgotten about it, Adrian. Uh, 
Il- oh, so that's uh, exploited cinema wrapping up here. Terminator two judgment day, Ma- Maxwell. I'm sorry, Max, you're the one that wanted the exploitation of, uh, you know, people being taken advantage of Maxwell. Unash. she says zombie King Edward Furlong is sexy, but doesn't hold a candle to the sensuous sex machine. That is T2 Edward Furlong. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. All right. You and Zach need to hang out. <laughs> Fucking hell yeah. This is the comment. This is the commentary where you said so kissable. Hell yeah. When you saw those fucking red dude, that's fucking I is I got a I laughed and got a weird shiver up my spine at the same time when you said that. I, I don't think I said kissable. I think I said uh like oh it's so cute or something like that. No, you said kissable. You said I swear Maybe. you said it. Because it was like that it was that scene in the truck where his mom snaps at him like, Are you okay? He's like, I'm fine. And it, and you could just see his, like his wet like lips, <laughs> and you're like, and I, and I make notice of him because I always notice how fucking red and wet his lips look. It's like weird, and you're like, oh, they're so kissable. Hell yeah! And it was like, oh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there's a you know how like you guys like you had the goat. Riverman has Riverman. I should like have a fucking moniker. And I was thinking about Lil Epstein. L- oh gosh, dude, that's too far. No. Lil Epstein, that's fucking terrible, man. See, what if there was a rapper that did that? That'd be dank. That would be dank. Um, Total Recall commentary featuring Riverman. Bloodless says, as soon as Douglas Quaid falls asleep in the beginning, right after he's questioned about the woman, the camera pans off above his head, and that's when the dream begins. I just I just came up with a sick bar, though, for my next record. Like, my, my raps be fucking your kids up so bad you call me Lil Epstein. That's a dank bar. I can only imagine all the bleeps that are going to be in this, I hope. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, bloodless. Not sorry, Zach interrupted you with that tasteless uh, anecdote. Uh, he says the entire movie is a dream implant he'd paid for at Recall, so none of it actually happens. If you listen to the director commentary on the special edition DVD, Paul confirms this. See you at the party, Victor. Best line in the movie. Nine out of ten. He says. See, I didn't know Verhoeven ever confirmed, and uh, you know the actual. Is it real? Is it a dream? I didn't yeah. know that. I thought it was always one of those things where it was up to interpretation. Yeah, I mean, it can be. I mean, it just depends on how you want to watch it. I mean, I'd be curious to know how it was in the book and how close the movie follows the book. Oh, yeah. You know, it's interesting. It just makes me want to watch the movie. Uh, thanks, Bloodless. Uh, cough. Oh, Cinema Enema. We got some Cinema Enemas we'll save. We're going to do that sooner than later. Like I said, we're going to go back to try and do those at least once a month. Uh, so I'll save those. Amityville 2, The Possession, Bloodless. You say, this movie scared the shit out of me when I saw it back in the early 90s. Yeah, the sister is a total freak for sure. I remember watching this movie as a dirty pleasure from time to time, LOL. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like conflicting because she is hot. I mean. Your sister's a freak. She's a freak. See, that that sounds like that could be like bad or good. Oh, man. Yeah, it's such a dirty, dirty fucking movie. (laughs) Exactly. Um. Let's see more awesome cinema anima comments. I will read later when we do that. Evil Dead 2013 review. This is a classic BTM episode when the movie first came out. Bloodless, you also, it looks like you're going through the archives, man. We appreciate it. He rates it 5 out of 10. Great gore, and that's about it, he says. That episode was never on YouTube, so that was the that was recently uploaded. You guys, you, Riverman, and uh, Patrick Fury reviewed that one. Oh, well, I mean, none of these classic episodes were ever on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we upload these classics for those that don't know uh, from our golden years, right? Our our our, our beginnings, and uh, which we were doing it for a long time before we actually got on YouTube and stuff like that. So um, Zach posts a classic episode once a week. So technically, there's extra content coming in weekly. Um, Basically, there's like maybe eight more episodes, and then everything will be on YouTube, and we'll put it in a in a, a nice little playlist, all in order. That's cool. It'd be dank. Yeah, and you guys can just go through it like that. So in a couple of months, the prophecy will be fulfilled, according to Zach. And uh, yeah, you can just kind of see the evolution unfold. And obviously, warts and all, uh, from the very beginnings when we had audio issues and we were just sort of learning the ropes, when we were going through the phase of interviewing people and just all the different casts of characters that we've had over the years that we uh, reference and you might not know of, um, you can get a history lesson by going through that folder. So you know uh, what though, there are, there are some of those early walking dead podcasts that are forever lost to time because, because I never cared about that show. I didn't bother like keeping them saved. I had one saved of the whole season three uh, go through when you were doing it with a girl named Izzy. Yeah. Yeah. She was terrible. Oh, really? Yeah, she sounded she's, good. Oh, really? I, I thought she was horrible. I put a, I, I, I put that one up, so that one's still around. It's just like the season three finale, and uh, yeah, 
all the other ones before that are gone to time. But that's when we started putting stuff on YouTube, though, was when we started doing with Pat, right? Mm -hmm. That's the good shit, though, man, because I think those are I don't think you have to. I mean, obviously, they're topical. We are talking about the episodes and that's kind of a time capsule at this point. No one really watches the show. But for what they are, they were a lot of fun. And Patrick's always fun to record with, man, which, by the way, Pat, once again, it feels like every the la in the last handful of months, he keeps kind of rebringing up about him wanting to do content. He just, you know, he's hesitant to pull the trigger. So I keep trying to encourage him. Like, he's like, oh, man, I want to do my own metal centric thing. And because, you know, there's a lot of channels and, and shows online that do it. But, you know, they eventually become posers. Right. And they start pandering. And, you know, uh, and in and, and Pat, if anything, he's fucking true with a V. Mm -hmm. I've never met anybody that has their finger on the pulse more than Pat with like new music. So, you know, his thing is he'll follow stuff. Um, all these YouTube channels that are big that focus on quote unquote, the scene. But eventually he says, once they get bigger, they start going through the same motions where they talk about the same bands at nauseum and they don't acknowledge the, the bands that are up and coming, you know, that are keeping the scene alive. Mm -hmm. And that's what Pat's all about. So, and Pat knows about Pat's that guy where, um, a debut record could come out and he's like, man, I fucking liked them in their demo and he's over it. <laughs> I remember I posted a, a, like there's a band called Scarlet that put out an album called cult fiction. Okay. And like, I really liked them. And the, like uh, I posted like back before I was on the show, I posted like one day, like they all of a sudden just like released a, like a demo song. And I posted that when you guys were talking about music and uh, talked to Patrick, I was like, you ever heard of this band? And he knew who they were. I was surprised. He's uh, we, we have a, we have a private thread, me, Patrick and uh, my friend Randall, right. He was an episode on deep end, right. The, the, the director mm -hmm. and uh, we have a thread going all the time and it's just nothing but music. And I am lost half the time because uh, they he's Randall and him. They have a very similar taste. They can kind of compete, but even Randall's like, dude, fucking that dude's unreal. Like I just, he knows every fucking little thing and he is, it's like he'll be, he'll, he would have talked about a band three months ago and then I'll finally get around to listening to it. And then I think I'm being all cool and be like, Hey Pat, I checked that out. Album, dude, I'm really digging. It. He's like, Oh, you still listen to that fucking dad rock. He literally did every time I try and put dude, if it's older than like a year, uh, he is running. I mean, he's kind of like in jest, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm kind of an old man. I, I like hard music, but I still listen to entombed. I still listen to fucking death. I still listen like classic. I am, I am that guy. That's hard to, there's just so much shit coming at us. It's really hard for me to really even invest in finding out the new scene and new stuff. Anyway, if I talk about how I was spinning a death record or symbolic or something, he'll be like classic rock, LOL. Like what? <laughs> like, like entombed is not, but it's the joke. It's the big running joke that we have. And I just, you can never please Pat. Cause it's like, I'm, I'm almost afraid to <laughs> tell him what I'm listening to. Even if I think I'm hip and I finally got it like, Oh yeah, man, this man, it's never on the, it's never on the fucking cusp enough. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm over it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's funny. That's what makes him hilarious. Um, last two. Oh, sorry. I interrupted the, we interrupted the comment, but basically bloodless. You said uh, regarding evil dead 2313, that review that uh, Hollywood should stop remaking classics. A sequel to army darkness would have been nice. They were talking about it for a little bit. You know, when that movie is a success, they're like, okay, you know, Fetty Alvarez, we're going to do a sequel to this. And then this is going to fast track uh, army darkness too. And then, you know, they're going to, they're going to eventually meet. They're going to come together. Together. The whole yeah, the whole writing retreat for Army Darkness Two basically became what became of uh, Ash Ash Evil, Evil Dead because they were having so many ideas. Yeah, for sure, and and it wasn't uh, for nothing because Ash vs Evil Dead was awesome. So, Bloodless mm -hmm. RVC, uh, last couple of comments here. We're gonna read. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna read one more because the rest of it's Cinema Enema. But on the Scream Three live commentary, Bloodless, you added a comment. You said, "Cool commentary, guys." Yeah, what you mentioned about feeling or sensing someone near or on top of you while, while asleep is actually universal among humans. I had an experience a few years ago where in my sleep I felt hands and fingernails coming up from below me and I actually seen and felt that old lady tickling my chin with her long fingernails. I suddenly woke up, heart pounding and terrified. I remember still feeling her presence a few moments after awakening. Now, you can call BS on that, but I speak the truth. It's actually very well documented that about this phenomenon. Uh, this usually happens while you're lucid dreaming. Uh, let's see, very hard. 
Uh, that time in my life, I was under a lot of pressure and stressed out, so that may have attributed to it as well, but you're definitely not alone in your experience. A lot of similarities to Nightmare on Elm Street, ironically. I don't dream so much anymore, but when I do, it may be interesting to vlog my dream as soon as I wake up and keep a record so uh, I can look back. 50 or even 200 years from now, future families could revisit your record with a modern technology, something our ancestors could never yeah. do. And he also says, also, I'm high as fuck, though. Hello. Hell yeah. See, I remember hearing that we always dream. It's just like once we get up and start moving around, we forget. So like the easiest way to like remember what you dream is to try to like remember like when you wake up to just stay laying down and try mm -hmm. to like collect everything you remember. 100%. I do that. Yeah. And so, like, I remember like when I was a kid, I used to have like kind of like those kind of dreams, but because I always slept on my stomach when I was younger, like, I, I think that has a lot to do with how you perceive it when it happens too. Cause if you're laying on your back, you might like, yeah, hallucinate something on top of you. But because I was always laying on my stomach, like I would always like hear like, like fucking like I'd see like a bloody hand coming up from like under my bed, like to reach up for me and shit like that. Uh -huh. and I remember like sometimes like, I'd have, I'd think like I heard or felt somebody just like sit on my bed, like next to me and I freak out like, cause no one's supposed to be there and, but I can't move and shit. There's this weird, like in between like zone you can be in from being awake and asleep that, yeah, it feels, I don't know if that's what it is, but I feel like there is that weird line where you're seeing what you're really seeing a lot, but some of that dream ness is is seeping into it that's i think that's when you feel like someone's sitting on the edge of your bed right like real mm -hmm. um, yeah. i don't i don't know what it is but i no, i do the same thing i i think we would have to be dreaming non-stop because it's like does our brain really shut off isn't dreaming just thinking while mm -hmm. we're asleep maybe yeah and uh i imagine we're dreaming the entire duration of our of our respite and we just happen to catch a little piece of it um, and yeah, it's, it, I do, whenever I have a dream and it's something f fucked up where I want to remember it, I don't get up because as soon as you get up and start your morning routine, you go straight to the bathroom, whatever it's gone. It's weird. But I lay down without getting up and I pull out my phone and I literally, while it's fresh in my mind, I get on a notepad on my phone and I type out every little detail I can remember. And then sometimes I'll go back to sleep and then I'll wake up and I'll, I'll reread it later and I'll be like, what the fuck? Yeah, um, if you're really lucky, though, something you do about your day will trigger like, oh, wait, I, d I remember doing this not that long ago. And then like the dream will come back to you. But it'll be it'll be a trip when I go back and read those notes because I will I will write it down and, and um, document it. And um, it's weird. Like, I'll be like, what the fuck was I because I, I still don't remember it because it's legit. Mm -hmm. I don't remember writing it. barely. I mean, I'll, I'll remember kind of jotting it down, but I don't remember anything about it other than what I'm writing. And um, it works. Sometimes I get some cool ideas for little things. Sometimes I'm just like, what the fuck is this crazy shit? Like, I want to delete this ASAP. Uh, sometimes I don't want to explore fucked up dreams, man, because they're just fucking weird. I don't know what it is. And sometimes it's just like falling asleep with the TV on. It's funny when you do that and shit will just seep into your subconscious. So mm -hmm. like, I think I fell asleep. Um watching a dvd of uh quantum leap and of course on the dvd selection menu it might it loops the the theme song over and over and over again so like you know i think i was dreaming i was in quantum leap because it's like i'm fucking hearing the yeah. music non-stop for eight hours straight i but. sleep like i sleep with earphones in which is dangerous because like somebody could break in and i wouldn't even know yeah but, like i do it regardless and like uh fucking uh like i'll i'll be sleeping dreaming that i'm like at school again and like my phone was going off or my iPod's going off and it's playing the song out loud and I'm apologizing to everybody because I'm like holding up class or something. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can't get it to stop. Like I'm sitting there pushing it, like trying to stop the music and it's just like freezing and not shutting off. But it's just because of, like I'm not really trying to shut it off. It's just playing mm -hmm. as I'm sleeping. Hey, Zach, tell me, how did we somehow make a 22 episode of Art for the Dark into an hour and a half commentary? <laughs> all these all comments, these baby these question catch up yeah so we are done we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up uh, but yeah I'm, that's kind of cool man we had a nice beefy commentary out of this um same same old spiel guys uh if you guys are new to the channel and you're just passing by and you like what you hear please subscribe to the channel consider it anyway and uh if you guys are already subscribed or new to it uh, hit the notification bell um it'll alert you immediately uh whenever we go live like for example I think David Capper was saying, you know, he caught us at the tail end of it. You'll be able to get alerted as soon. And I think um, 
it might have been Brian Kennedy, I think. Uh, Brian Kennedy, he said uh, he got the alert because he hits the notification bell and he uh, he saw immediately when we went live and he was able to jump in from the beginning. So anyway, if you want to be able to check out all our videos and not miss any because the YouTube algorithms are real effed up. Um, but obviously, the more interactions we get, the more uh, likes on our um, our videos we get, our podcasts get the more comments. That kind of stuff tells YouTube that there's people that like what we're doing. So it kind of pushes us into the algorithms a little more. So otherwise, oh, yeah. yeah. So otherwise, otherwise, like even though you're subscribed to us, it'll feel like we haven't posted in a month sometimes, but no, we post multiple times every week. And I have channels like that myself where it's like, holy shit, where are these guys? Yeah. And you'll dig in you'll be like, oh yeah, he's been posting this whole time. So, but you know what? Joke's on the people that downvote us too. If you technically YouTube sees that as interaction too. So it's kind of like all news is good news. Even if somebody fucking downvotes our shit and they're mad at us for whatever reason, it's, it still helps the algorithm. So, uh, you know, keep the interaction coming. We love it. Uh, if you guys want to support us in any other way, obviously the best and easiest way to do that is just to keep listening and, and subscribing to us or, or go into podcast services. You know, we're on all of them that, that matter. <laughs> Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. Just going over there and giving us a, a subscribe over there um, or giving us a nice review or a five star rating. That stuff is is all we could ever really ask for. And once again, it helps us pump us into those algorithms and we'll become exposed to other people that are going to like our show like you guys. Um, if you guys wanted to do anything in addition, we do have a Patreon set up uh, where currently you can get all of our content uh, in advance. Uh, and we're working on cooking up some bonus shit for you guys as well. So go check that out. Links for that stuff is below everything, no matter where you're listening to us. Yeah. What's up? We got a comment on our, our new uh, episode of Cinema Enema, but we'll save that for the next Cinema Enema. For sure. Yeah. So uh, we'll, right. we'll be sure to read Patreon comments and all that stuff. And, and Zach and I, like I said, we're new to the whole Patreon thing, but uh, I'm going to start. They don't have an app. I don't think, which is oh, fucked really? up. Yeah, because I would be able to be. So I'm going to make sure to keep it up on, on my, my main work PC here um, so I can be engaged with it. Uh, and I think maybe even, gosh, uh, if you guys are into the idea, maybe we can do once a week little posts or blogs or something. Just just something to kind of keep it engaged with you guys. Um, and I know like I have all kinds of ideas and if my, you guys can submit ideas as well. Uh, but like I said, we kind of talk on and off about a potential covers record or whatever and i know mac and zach have one i think you guys should throw it on that patreon um but about doing another one i think that'd be something cool for patreon as far as like hey we have these songs we got like 30 cool ideas we got to dwindle it down to 10 and we maybe maybe like let people vote like which ones you know so oh, stuff yeah. stuff like that would be cool and then let that be something you guys can have right because you know we're not we're not making money off somebody else's copyrighted songs you know we're giving it as a gift to people that donate so that's the loophole. Um, but anyway, if you guys want to also, there's a Teespring uh, in the links. You can find those everywhere below the videos or podcasts. Uh, you know, if you guys like what we do and you want to look sexy liking what we do, you can go over to there. And uh, we got shirt designs for almost all the shows that we got going on. Um, they always kick us back a nice percentage whenever you guys buy something from them. So, and by all means, if you guys have bought in shirts or you're going to buy a shirt or whatever, uh, tag us on Instagram with it. We've had a couple of folks do that and that's always really awesome to see. And we'll, we'll hundred percent give you shout outs and props for doing that, man. So other than that, that's about all we got. Matt, uh, you want to promote anything, Zach, before we hang up here? Oh yeah. Princess awesome. Super pony power punch part two. It's got a trailer. Go check it out. Okay. Go to, okay. Uh, a Facebook or a fucking, uh, and wherever it's all over tell me about this real quick so why is it part two is there part one you will find out when our commentary releases okay <laughs> all right it, or you're going to get the commentary version on youtube and then the the un the no commentary version is going to have to go up on like uh uh like archive.org because like we can't put it on youtube because it's got copyrighted music and it keeps getting flagged okay and this is a if you want to spoil too much you want to keep it a secret it's a fucking full-length documentary that Mac and Zach made in 2008, and uh, it fucking it's a documentary. I always called it a debauchery mentary yeah. or something. I I watched the trailer too, and I'm like, I didn't know this fucking shit existed, and it looks awesome. <laughs> it was it it's, it's it feels like a time capsule. It feels like a jackass thing, like just oh, yeah. the way it's edited and stuff like that. And it's it's funny seeing baby Mac and Zach on there doing stupid shit. So anyway, I don't really um, it's it kind of 
put you put like a hidden Easter egg there. So like when you click on the links, if you guys go to like the uh, Instagrams and stuff, you can get a link. And I think it's a, a closed link. So you have to click the link to, to access it, I think. Um, is it going to go on the Revival House channel? Because I think that link takes you to Mac and Zach's channel or is that just because it's hidden? Yeah, we, we, we're thinking about just putting it on the Mac and Zach one because it doesn't really fit any of our other videos on well, Revival House. I think that would be a mistake because all the followership is mostly over here. I think you should put it. I think you should well, put plus, it on the Rebels. Plus, there's some male nudity in it. Mm. So, yeah, like we're going to try to see if like uh, it's nothing like there's no dicks. It's just like butts and stuff. But like, yeah. Why not put the unedited version on Patreon? The edit unedited. Well, Patreon, basically, it doesn't have a video uploader. You basically have to use Facebook or uh youtube or vimeo or something but can't you can you pr can you provide like a video yeah okay okay well can you put up uh can you get away with putting up something unedited or whatever uh, as a link to patreon folks and they could follow like a private link uh that's uh yeah with the with archive.org i know i can okay well anyway i think that's available now on patreon right Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's been so as of this, you, as of you hearing this, I think it's already been on Patreon a few days. Um, and I don't think as of you hearing this, you're going to hear it till next Monday um, elsewhere. So um, I or see it. Yeah, or see it is what I mean. So, you know, more incentive to check out the Patreon. But uh, anyway, if it ever does get blocked for the male nudity, I'll just have to like censor it and re-upload it or uh, put them both on archive or whatever. That's a bummer, man. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of depressed. That's not going to be on the Rev House channel because I, I, I thought that was so fucking cool, man. But yeah, if it's got nudity, I mean, like, I think you should make one that pleases the Google gods. Like that's a little edited and then you should do like, you know, you're saying and put the unedited, you know, via a link on the Patreon. So that's what I think you should do. But um, if it's full length, it's cool. Uh, anyway, that's going to be a big deal. Let us know what you think. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hop on out of here. Thank you guys as always for um, contributing and uh, leaving feedback and, and listening as usual. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye bye. End of the week at the Revival House. Next month's theme, you got to figure it out. Italian zombies of Holly Shore I slash her with the knife and the girl next door And one second in, get it all queued up and ready Hit play in three, two, one Bye bye puppet Zach beat in a solo cup man Couldn't this camera's love and Josh and Scott failed and Riverman's bail Bye bye puppets Sounds good, like this country used to.